Hello there, first grade friends, and welcome back to another lesson on BCPS TV. My name is Mr. Tang, and we will be having some help today from Mrs. Duavetti. We're going to be taking a look at adding and subtracting 10. This is going to be lesson one for the week of May 25th to May 29th. In today's lesson, we're going to be adding or subtracting 10 from two digit numbers. And we're going to be able to keep track of this by recording the results by writing addition and subtraction equations. Let's start off by taking a look at a few representations. How would you count these place value blocks? Explain your strategy to someone else. As you're looking at these three images, think about what you know about tens and what you know about ones. When adding and subtracting two digit numbers, it's often easier to rewrite the number in expanded form. Expanded form is when you write a number to show the value of each digit. Take a look at this example and think to yourself, what does the tens place represent? What does the ones place represent? Right away, I can see that there are three groups of 10, meaning there are three tens. I also see that there are four ones. So I could put a four in the ones place. I know that 30 plus four is equal to 34. Let's see how we can use this to help us add and subtract. In our next example, let's start off by thinking the same way. What does the tens place represent? What does the ones place represent? I can see that there are five groups of 10, which equals 50. So I'm gonna put a five in the tens place. I can also see that there are two ones. So I will put a two in the ones place. So my 50 plus two equals 52. So now that we have 52, we can use our understanding of place value to add or subtract groups of 10. Let's take a look at how we can use this in addition. What if we had 52 plus 20? We can see that we are adding two groups of 10. Does this change anything about our ones place? No, it doesn't. So what is five tens? plus two tens. That's right, seven tens. And then we can add the two that we already had. So in review, 52 plus 20 can be broken down as 52 plus two plus 20. And then we could change the order and just add our tens together. So 50 plus 20 plus two is equal to 70 plus two which equals 72. Let's take a look at how we can use this with subtraction. What if we had 52 minus 30? We know that we aren't adding anything because we are subtracting. In fact, we are taking away three groups of 10. Does this change anything about our ones place? No, it doesn't. So what is five tens minus three tens? That's right, two tens. And then if we add back our two that we already had, we're left with 22. So in review, if we have 52 minus 20, we know that 52 is broken down to 50 plus two. And if we were to take away the 30, we can focus on our tens place. So 50 minus 30 plus 2 is equal to 20 plus 2, which equals 22. Now, let's go to Mrs. Dorvetti for more on how to add or subtract using a hundreds chart. 
First graders are learning how to add and subtract tens using place value patterns rather than counting by ones. Students may use hundreds charts or number lines to build their understanding of adding 10. Here's an example of how to add 27 plus 10. We could count by ones like this. We could start on 27 and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do you notice about the sum of 37? Yes, it's directly below the 27 on the 100s chart. That's because there are 10 boxes in every row on a 100 chart. So every time we add 10 on a 100 chart, our sum will be directly below the number. So adding 10, we'll put our sum directly below our number. You may have also noticed that there are two 10s and seven ones in 27. In 37, there are now three tens and seven ones. There are three tens since we added one and the seven stays the same. Will this work again if we add another 10? Let's try with 37 plus 10 more. I'm going to count by ones just to make sure that our pattern will continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, again, my sum is directly below the 37 on the next row of the hundreds chart. I can see that my pattern continued because there were three tens in 37 and seven ones. Then I added one more 10, so now I have four and my seven ones stayed the same. So now that we've figured out this pattern, every time we add 10, we can just add a 10 in the tens place, or if I'm looking at a hundreds chart, I can just skip down a row on the hundreds chart. This pattern will help first graders add tens efficiently without having to count by ones every time. Adding 10 on a hundreds chart will help first graders arrive at their answers much more quickly and they will be less likely to make a counting error. What does this look like when we use subtraction? Let's try with 27 minus 10. Let's find the number 27. We want to subtract 10. We could count back by ones like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What do you notice about the difference? Yes, it's directly above the 27 on the 100s chart. That's because there are 10 boxes in every row on the hundreds chart. So every time we subtract a 10, our answer will be directly above the number. You might have also noticed that there are two 10s in the number 27 and seven ones. And in 17, there is one 10 and seven ones. So there's one 10 because we took one of the 10s away and the seven one stays the same. Will this work again if we try a different expression? Let's pick 62. And now I wanna take away two 10s or 20. Let's find 62 on the 100s chart. Since now we have proven that our strategy will work of counting back a 10, let's see if we can jump back two rows on our 100s chart. If I take away my first 10, 
that would be 52. But remember, we wanted to take away 20, so I had to take away another 10 by counting back another row. So now we have taken away 10 two times, so we know that we have done 62 minus 20, and our answer is 42. Let's take a look at our place value and make sure that we're correct. We started out with six tens, and we took away two tens, so we have four tens. We started out with two in the ones place, but we didn't take away any ones, and we still have two in the ones place. So we know that our answer is correct. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dwavetti. That was super helpful. Boys and girls, now it's your turn to try it. If you look in your Try It section on Schoology, you'll see the adding and subtracting 10 on the 100 chart. The directions and materials can be found there. And when you're confident and ready to, move on to the Show What You Know section and complete the What's Missing plus or minus 10 resource sheet. A PowerPoint of the resources can be found right in Schoology. You can open up the PowerPoint slides and use the Draw feature to digitally write on the resources and then save and upload it for your teacher to see. The draw feature can be found in the toolbar once you have opened PowerPoint. And that's all for us today. You guys did a wonderful job. And on behalf of Mrs. Dovetti and myself, stay safe, wash those hands, and do the math.